This trader lost 53 trades in a row. 53 trades in a row. How is that possible? I have no idea. That's why I sat down with this guy one-on-one -on -one and I asked him to send me screenshots of his MetaTrader, of his trade reviews to see is this true or not. And here you go. You can see nothing but negative and break even. Negative and break even, right? And so I thought I would help this guy one-on-one. -on -one. He did come to me with a list of questions saying like, hey, what mistakes did I make in this trade setup? Was I trading against the trend? Is there structure break that I should be looking out for in reversal zones? And to be honest, his questions that he was asking were irrelevant. You don't lose 53 trades in a row by trading against the trend or making little mistakes regarding the quality of your trade setup or understanding structure. You lose 53 trades in a row by you screwing up your trading plan, not having a trading plan, holding your losers, closing trades early. You're a bomb. You're, you're a disaster, basically. And I was talking to that guy and I said, hey, I'm going to be pretty hard on you. He understood that because he was making big, big mistakes. In his, and these are mistakes that people tend to be making early on in their trading career. But this guy has been going on for two years. So we're going to analyze his trading mistakes. This is the third time that I'm making this video, probably like the fourth or fifth time now, because my brain is everywhere because this guy is like all over the place. Right. And I'm trying to figure out, do I start here? Do I start here? Do I start here? And as soon as I start talking about one thing, I start thinking about 20 different things that he's doing wrong. Like I'm just going to go over roughly the top two, top three problems. And one of the main problems that I saw in his trading is he was suffocating his trading. And what I mean by this is he was getting into a long position, but as soon as it stopped him out, as soon as it stopped him out, he would instantly reverse and start selling. He would get into a new position and say, Hey, the market's going down. I'm getting short. And then only for that market to start going back up. You know what I mean? So he was chasing the markets thinking he was wrong. That's the first mistake that he was doing. The second mistake what he was doing is when he did enter a trade and prices did go in favor to him, he started making money. He instantly moved his stop loss to break even. He was suffocating his trade review, his trade, I guess you could say, right? So an example of this, let me pull up a, a trade review from me to make it more visual for you guys. So this right here is a trade review. What I mean by what he would be doing is if prices fell, he gets into his trade, price falls, gets him out of his trade. As soon as it stops him out right here, he would instantly go short only to have the market continue to rally back up in his favor, right? Then he's got to close that. So one position turned into two losing trades in a row. The other main problem that he was having was, let me delete this, is he was moving his stop loss to break even so quickly. So you'll notice that I'm getting filled on this position right here as soon as price came in. Notice how I have my take profit up here or my original take profit up in here. Okay, what he was doing was he was moving a stop loss to break even as soon as price went in favor. But you can see after I got filled, prices did go back in once, maybe twice. It diddled down, you know, screwed around a little bit and then continued up. Right. Rarely do you see prices come in and then instantly take off, instantly take off to your take profit. Usually you'll have prices go up a little bit and then down, then up, and then down like that. You know, that's typically how it looks. And so what he was doing was as soon as it moved a little bit in his take profit, he would instantly move his stop loss to break even and he would get stopped out, basically suffocating his trade and not letting his trade breathe. And that's how you see so many break evens, break even, break even, break even, break even. And then he would lose, 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 lose. And he's taking a lot of the same trades on the same pair. Like he would buy, he would lose the trade, then he would go sell and they would both be losers, you know, always breaking even on one of the trades and then losing on the other one, right? Another thing that I noticed was he was taking like six, seven trades in a day. Personally, for me, I take one, maybe two a day maximum. So I don't take many trades. So when you're taking so many trades, I, I think you, in my opinion, you lose the quality factor of the trade setups. Then if you are saying, hey, this is my exact trade setup. I need this to happen, this to happen, this to happen. Okay, you've got a quality trade set. You need a lot of criteria for you to actually enter a trade. Like an example of this would be like, hey, I need to see a big explosive move to the upside. I need to see trend lines being broken. I need to see opposing zones being removed. I need to see price inside my higher time frame demand zone. I need this, 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 this. I need to have like six things in my favor for me to take a trade. If I don't have all of them, I don't take the trade, right? 
Now, for somebody like him, he would say, okay, I have this, I have this, I have this. It's decent. I'll still take the trade. Now, to me, that's no trade, right? Quality over quantity. That's just how I vibe when it comes to my trading. So I come to the conclusion for you guys and what I told him. How can he stop making these mistakes? And this is something I recommend for everybody. And this is having a very mechanical way to be trading, a very rules-based trading system. I need this, 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 this in my favor in order to take a trade. If I don't have this, 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 then it's no trade. If I have two out of the four, no trade. If I have three out of the four, no trade. If I have four out of four, okay, I take the trade, right? Making your trading as mechanical as you can will help you make less emotional decisions, okay? It's the same way when it comes to his trade management. You know how I was saying he, as soon as prices would go in his favor up a little bit, uh, he would move, move his stop loss to break even? Well, I told him what he needs to be doing is start going for two to one. So two to one reward to risk. So an example of this would be like, hey, oops, let me get back on this. Let me take a new picture of this. So for example, I enter on this pullback, right? And here's my stop loss. That's my zone. Let me blow it up a little bit. I'm No matter what, when I get filled into this trade, I need to have enough profit margin, but I am going to get out at two to one. If I don't get out at two to one, then I'm getting out, of, out at a loss basically, right? So it either hits my stop loss, hits my stop loss, or it hits my take profit. There's no moving my stop loss to break even because you start doing that you're going to start making emotional decisions all right and this actually this trade was an emotional decision right i took profit early just reinforced how important sticking to your rules and your trading plan and your management position is actually so this is a, a good example right because if i did hold on to it well i would have hit my take profit right so i do make trading mistakes as well but if you can make your training as mechanical as you can you will lower the chance of this happening. So if you come to this approach saying, hey, I'm in this trade, I either hit my two to one take profit or I lose the trade, right? If you can consistently take that trade setup and say, hey, I am going to get out at two to one or it completely stops me out. Perfect, all right? Another thing that he needs to be doing is journaling his trades because if you don't have your trades journaled, you can't expect to get better. If you have 100 trades journaled, I can go back at my trade plan and look at these trades and say, hey, I understand I was getting out at a three to one, but what happens if I went to four to one or five to one? Statistically, what's my win loss difference if I go for a five to one versus a three to one, as long as everything else stays the same, you know? Or what happens if I start moving my, my stop loss to break even after a three to one, right? Does it statistically make sense for me in a win loss do i make more money in that case right so this is why journaling your trades is so important so you can fall back and look at all the trades you have taken over the last six months month over the last year to get a better edge for yourself this is why journaling is so important because if people in my group come to me and they're like hey i'm not finding results and i say okay great let's look at your trade reviews and they come to me like i don't have any trade reviews i'm like well dude i can't help you like how do you expect me to review your trading if you don't have trade reviews right? So journal your trades, have a very step-by-step -step approach to how you enter a trade and a very step-by-step -step approach on how you're going to manage your trade, right? Uh, a good trading exercise that I gave him uh, to do to make sure that you have this, 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 and in order to take your trade, we're bringing up the example as in, let's go here, Bollinger Bands and stochastic RSI. And I told them a buy setup or a sell setup will be when RSI is extremely overbought or oversold. So a buy setup would be overbought and you have price piercing through the bottom of the Bollinger Bands. And so I was going through examples with them. I said, well, hey, what we need to see is this. We need to see price piercing through the bottom of it quite significantly, as well as price being oversold. Okay, and then that will be our buy setup. If we only have one out of the two, no trade. If we have two out of the two, okay, we are going to take the trade. And how do we take the trade? We are going to get out at a two to one. It's, it's either going to be a winner or a loser. Okay, and I was going through examples with them. I said, hey, would this be a trade setup? He's like, yes, okay. Would this be a trade setup here? He's like, no. I go, why? Because it's not at the bottom, right? I say, okay, good is this a sell setup? He's like, no. I'm like, why? 
because it's not piercing through the top of the Bollinger Bands and the RSI is not overbought. I said, perfect. Uh, let's go over here. What about this up here? He's like, yes, this would be a trade setup, a sell setup. I'm like, why? Because then he says, then he tells me, he says, well, price is piercing way above the top of the Bollinger Band and price is way above the Stochastics RSI. So that's a sell setup. I said, perfect. So what you can see what you've done with me is you have a systematic approach of you can do this every single time. If you have this and this, you take the trade and you do go for a two to one, right? Because when he was reviewing, my, when I was looking at his trades, let's go back to this. I was looking at his trades. This trade setup looks completely different than this one, right? And then those trade setups look completely different than these ones, right? And then this trade setup is completely different than the other ones. Like he was all over the place. Like there was no trade setup that looked the exact same, right? That's why I always say become a one trick pony, have a very systematic approach and follow your trading plan, right? More rules you add, yes, you will have less trades you have you'll have less trades but they're going to be better quality and you're going to be making less emotional decisions so i think you guys can learn a lot from this type of stuff and i think he learned a lot from this stuff type of stuff and i told him hey come up with a new trading approach I, I told him to start doing that with the bollinger band and the stochastics i said hey reach out to me in 20 trades and let me know how you did right follow the trading plan like do that exact thing right Two to ones consistently trade management, because if you have those trades, then documented after 50 trades, you can then review them to say, hey, does it make more sense for me to go for a three to one? Or, hey, does it make sense for me to move my stop loss to break even after a one to one move? Am I giving it enough room to breathe the trade? You know what I mean? So, hey, I think you guys got a lot of value from this. I think uh, a lot of lessons to be learned here, man. Trading mechanical. I think that's uh, it's a lot easier less trading emotional decisions to be made okay guys if you guys have any questions you can let me know if you guys want to reach out to me on social media at moneyball austin facebook twitter instagram thank you guys for the 10k subscribers hey we hit it cheers guys thank you guys so much on our way to 100k the journey continues baby if you guys would like the free training of supply and demand moneyballtrading.com or you can go to my tips playlist and check out that right there if you have any questions let me know cheers Bye bye